If you've been watching these videos, you know how much I like animal protein glues. And the reason is because I'm a furniture conservator in private practice. And we and those in the museum industry who restore objects insist on reversibility in the products we use. That way we can repair them in the future. And the, it's the only way to do something properly, in my opinion. So the protein glues are reversible in a very simple concept. And that is that you add water and heat to the glue, which makes it liquid. If you think about ice and liquid and steam and water by itself, you can go from solid to liquid to gas to liquid to solid just by changing the temperature. Animal glues, which are basically 50% water, react the same way. So they can go from solid, like this piece of glue, which is solid, the old school plate glue, the way you used to buy it, or granulated glue, which is uh, the same thing ground up and sold as a powder. This is a solid state. So in order to make it liquid and usable, you need to add water to it. And so you would just add water, cold water to it until it uh, soaks up the water. That's about as much as you need. And once it is hydrated, it'll soak up all that water. And then you can put it in a glue pot. So the glue pot is heated up at work every day. If it's not hot, of course, it's solid. So this is a glue pot which is cold, the way we start out the day. It's a double boiler with water inside. By heating the glue pot on a hot plate with a temperature thermometer, you can make the glue liquid. And so around 140 degrees, the glue is liquid and usable. And we can then put it on the wood and veneer furniture and glue joints together and all that. And then as the wood absorbs the moisture and the temperature cools off, the glue sets up again to go back to this state. So it's a simple process of adding moisture and heat. And then it sets by losing heat and losing moisture. And that's reversible over hundreds of years. So you can take this glue, which is from, say, uh, the 18th century, and you can add water and heat and make it liquid again. I have a simple chart that I use in my school, which explains this very simply. This is temperature, and this is water. And so by taking cold glue and adding water about equal parts, then you can heat that up and produce a liquid glue and use it. And then it sets by losing temperature and by losing water and becomes solid again. It's very simple. So when people ask me about reversibility, they have to understand that the water and the heat needs to be at the surface of the glue. And if it's inside a joint, you've got to get the water in there and then the temperature somehow. So you may have to soak the joint or you may have to steam it. But you, once you get the water and the heat to the glue, it liquefies and becomes reversible and you can un, undo joints and repair joints, un, undo veneer and repair veneer. And uh, as an added bonus, this glue is transparent to stains and finishes and uh, is easy to clean up with water. And so this is the uh, glue which I just added water to. And you see now it's become a jello very quickly. The rate at which the glue absorbs the water is a function of its quality. This is high quality protein glue made by Milligan and Higgins. And so this now can be put into the glue pot directly and when it's heated up then it will become usable as soon as it reaches 140 degrees. Um, some of you may be familiar with the old brown glue which is the same concept, the same glue exactly, the same strength and quality it just has a, uh, a higher, uh, a lower gel, gel point, a lower gel point by a modifier that I've added to the glue so that instead of being solid at room temperature, it's a gel. And uh, it's a gel in the, in the bottle, see, ready to use, but it has to be heated up. So this bottle is just placed in hot water and you're ready to go. So you have the convenience of the protein glue and uh, the control over the material 
and that's why I feel very strongly about using protein glues and uh, for everything I build. Now not just hide glue, this is mostly hide glue, but there's also fish glue and bone glue and rabbit skin glue for other purposes. So you might want to experiment with the different qualities of protein glues that are available to you for different applications. So that's something about reversibility. Following this brief introduction, we would like to show you uh, videos using reversibility of this glue for specific applications like lifting veneer and opening up wood joints. People are always asking about veneering and using high glue and what is the importance of reversibility. And reversibility with high glue is the most important factor that synthetic glues don't do. So by having the ability to hydrate and heat the glue, I can liquefy it, which means I can remove veneer and save it or replace it or repair it. So this is a piece of old veneer that was damaged, which I've just removed from this table. And you can see on the back of it, the, the glue residue and the large circular saw marks that were used to produce this sawn veneer from 1840. So to remove this veneer, what I did was I soaked the veneer with water and I left it overnight and uh, actually I put some paper towels on it and got them wet so that it stayed wet all night long. After it got saturated with the water, the water went through the veneer to the glue, which means I can take a hot iron and I can heat the water and using a tool, a simple spatula type tool, I can lift up the veneer by rehydrating the glue and liquefying the glue. So it's a question of just running the heat and working the tool under the glue. And uh, I can lift this entire piece of veneer off very quickly and easily. And I can relay it later or I can use it for repair or I can repair it and put it back down. It's uh, easy to do with high glue. If this were done with some other glue, it would be permanent. You would lose the veneer. You'd have to damage the veneer to get it off. And uh, I don't like that. I like to save things. That's part of being a conservator. So this is, this glue was, this veneer was laid on this table in 1840. And I'm sure that the guy in 1840 from New York probably thought someday I'll have to fix that table. And he used the protein glues that were available at that time. And uh, you can see it, it lifts right up. So I'll just continue doing this until I get the whole thing lifted up. It takes about 10 minutes. And um, I just run the iron ahead of the tool. And I keep adding water as I need to. Remember, the most important thing of re reversing animal glue is you need water and heat at the glue surface. So that's why I left the water overnight so it would penetrate the veneer and get down to the glue. By the way, this mahogany is an endangered species, so the only way to get it for repairs is to take it off of old pieces and recycle it into new pieces, new repair. So there you go, that's how you do it. I hope you understand and uh, appreciate the way the glue works. And uh, of course, I don't need to tell you old brown glue does the same thing, but any protein glue will do this. Fish glue, bone glue, hide glue, rabbit skin glue, all the protein glues, they all will work with heat and with moisture. So there you go. See, I'm all ready to hear. Another example of using the reversibility of liquid protein glues to repair a joint which was not quite done properly. This piece had uh, a lot of broken pieces and when I took the clamps off I noticed it was not correctly repaired here and here. And so what I've done is I've added some water to rehydrate the glue joint and then I'm going to add some heat and heat it up. It may take a minute or two. 
but when it gets warm, it'll uh, liquefy and I'll be able to break that joint loose. This has a coating of glue, which I can just rehydrate with some fresh water. And I'll put fresh glue on it, and I'll reposition this, and it'll be fine once I get it back in place. So I'm going to now do the same thing over here. It's just a question of having the heat and the moisture at the glue. And, uh, and then once it li liquefies, you can break the joint open. Simple as that. Now I can go ahead and repair it properly and I have no problem at all. I just have to use the moisture and the heat and get it to the glue and it liquefies. That's why reversibility is important. Thank you. Okay, Pat. I'm, I'm on. Okay, Pat. Okay, I'm on. Okay, we got one camera. No, we got two. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. I'm not picking up strawberries. Mix nuts. Mix nuts. Yes. Okay. Wood right shop like that. Uh, tourner, right? Is it on? Oh, wow. Well. Right. Can you do the claps? That would be so cool. Take one. All right, take it. You can do it. Okay. Uh, I know, I know, I know you can. My mom stick. Hello, we use reversible glues. Take two. Okay. If you really, I have to yeah. introduce the videos? Yes. Following this short introduction, if you watch the video, you'll see how we apply reversibility to specific applications using this glue. Thank you. <laughs> you do it in one tick. Uh, <laughs> the thank you, not an hour later. That was okay. Though. Okay, try, try it again. The French director is very happy with it. <laughs> Following this short video introduction. Well, uh, good. No, one thing. With the dog outside, outside, the outside, dog. outside, outside, outside. <laughs> the dog walking through the Let whole thing. Let me tell you, you were not smiling once during okay, the whole video. No smiling. So no smiling, no smirking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>